Welcome to Esoterica the Podcast. I'm Chris Schultz. And I'm Aaron Christian. And we have a very special guest with us here today. I'd like to welcome to the studio, George Tirebiter. I mean, uh, excuse me, David Osman. That's better. And not you're not welcoming me to the studio at all. Wasn't that wonderful when we were all in the same place at the same time? No, I'm I'm at home and I'm I'm glad to be here. I'm I'm well and uh, and happy and you guys look well and happy too. <laughs> so far so good. So yep. um, the first question we usually ask our guests and it's I think it's the thing on everybody's mind is um how are you weathering 2020? Well, um we started in uh, 2019 with, uh, I gave a performance under the banner of Not Insane 2020. It's a benefit. We did it in the early part of the year. We had to keep rescheduling it because we got snowed out here on Whidbey Island. But the slogan, Not Insane 2020, carried us through, I think, not only 19, we get, we, it was a great benefit, but this year as well. And uh, we've had, we've got the bumper stickers out there and uh, weathering it personally, we live on an island north of Seattle, my wife and I, and my, uh, one of my sons uh, is with us during the pandemic. So we have our little pod and um, it's, we don't see a lot of people. Uh, we don't go out to eat. Uh, we have learned a kind of a new way of, uh, of dieting. Uh, marketing, dieting, eating, um, cooking. So all of that's been very interesting. I think we've all had a chance to rethink a lot of uh, our lives and our habits. Mm -hmm. readjust, it was time to readjust priorities, I think, for a good part of the nation. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yes. Look at it again. Look at what you you just absolutely have always taken for granted. You know? Mm -hmm my daughter in Los Angeles, who takes for granted walking her dog until everybody on the street is not wearing a mask. Mm. Then, then she's then, you know, how many times can you cross the street to avoid somebody who's coming at you, running at you, you know? Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a year to beat the Reaper. Yeah. Mm. And the reason I say that is that is from the, uh, for those of you who don't know who the Fire Sign Theater is or what it is or where it is, uh, our very first album came out in uh, early in 1968. It was called Waiting for the Electrician or Someone Like Him. And on that album happened to be a game show as part of an experience, a young man's experience, uh, going through a border. He's asked, for his passport and they take his passport and he moves on through one dilemma and uh, after another until he finally is on a game show called Beat the Reaper. And on this show, uh, you're injected with a deadly disease and if you can identify what you've got, why the plague? And it, and it was everybody has got the plague. He's, he's, got, he's, got, he's got the plague, why he's got the plague, he's got the plague, he's got the plague. I want it, I gotta have it. I gotta have that, he's got it, I gotta have that plague. Give me the plague. Well, what has happened in 2020? Exactly what we, did we predict it? Did we know it? Was it in our minds or is it just in the air? But exactly the same thing happened this year. Uh, let's go to the big motorcycle rally in Sturgis. Give it to me, I want it, pass it around, give me the plague. I mean, you know, people can do what they want, but. Yes, yeah. Well, in, sp in, in spite of the fact that it's, it's been so funny that it's hard to think of making fun of it, and so surreal that how can you get any farther out, this has been a great year for comedy. I mean, you know, just in the world of memes, uh, this, this, this president has been, you know, has been memed to death. And, and it's all pretty funny stuff, you know. Um, someone asked me, you know, if the Firesign Theater were to start again now, right now. There were four of us. We were uh, 28, 29, 30. And um, in that day, which was 1967, 68, uh, uh, we, we were just, we just wanted to laugh together. 
and we wanted to laugh with other people. And fortunately, uh, FM radio came in at just that time. So we, were, we could be for a couple of years very free on the radio to do or say or whatever we wanted to do or say <clears throat> without those, uh, well, how many, 10, 11, 12 deadly words. Uh, we didn't have to say those. We were having other kinds of fun. So we began on the radio. And, and the album, which is just coming out, which is a real record album with two LPs, um, is from those early radio shows where uh, there was a lot more freedom than came down shortly after. I tell you, it was a hard hit when, you know, radio went back to being tough. Uh, let's change our format and do what people don't want to hear. That's all. But it was a great moment for us. And that was at the beginning. Uh, the, <clears throat> the radio show called Radio Free Oz was so popular that uh, a um, producer from Columbia Records uh, called up Peter Bergman, who was the Wizard of Oz, and said, would you like to produce a record album? And he said, wait a minute, I got three friends. And uh, that was Phil Austin and, uh, and uh, Phil Proctor and myself. Uh, and we walked into the studio. It was a studio in those days where you could all go in at once and sit down. A little a bit of incense, uh, I think, probably in the air. I mean, really just incense. And uh, the lights were darkened and uh, Peter introduced us as uh, the Oz Fire Sign Theater. You know, it's the first time those words had ever been spoken, Fire Sign Theater. So we went in and we did the Oz Film Festival. And on the film festival, we got to show each one of us uh, and our several characters, our, this is radio, uh, our, we got to show our movies. And they were very experimental, interesting movies. And we talked about them. And it is, you know, I, I remember I was to, from a country in Latin America. I like to push cameras off of mountains because they rolled down. It was the experience was very psychedelic, very amazing to do this. And the bigger the camera, the more fun it is, you know. So we had these characters and uh, Phil Austin came up with a sort of tight British character who made sort of mm, uh, questionably uh, graphic, shall we say, movies. And so he started to show one called Blondie Pays the Rent. And Peter decided that it was just, it was, it was, frankly, it was dirty and he had to turn it. Blah, 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 blah. He, shut it down. Well, the phone started ringing. People said, you can't do that. You, you can't censor a movie. This is, this is free radio. This is, this is a community radio station. What are you doing? Uh, you can't censor this man. And we looked at each other and said, this is on the radio. They think we're showing a movie on the radio and that we've turned it off. We've got them. And so it was from that moment on for the next decade or so that we, <laughs> that we uh, played our um, movies in your mind games with uh, an audience that at that time was uh, in high school and college basically is where our audience in those years came from. Um, and they wanted to listen to what we had to say just like they wanted to listen to the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or any other pop band of the time because that's kind of what we were. That was very nice of them. And they, I'm glad they didn't call us the Marx Brothers of comedy. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh huh. There was a, a, it was really great to be booked into that movie. Steve uh, Sandoz, we went down, it uh, was done on Mount Hood in Oregon, way, way up on this mountain in, a, in what would have been the lodge in the wintertime. And uh, we, had, we had so little opportunity to be uh, movie performers, to make film. 
we tried real hard. And, uh, you know, Phil was, Phil uh, uh, Proctor was in any number of movies as an individual. We did write or help to write or partly write uh, a movie called Zachariah, which was uh, like a famous underground movie of 50 years ago. And, uh, but when Steve said, we're going to do this film, we're going to do it up on Mount Hood. And, and it had told us that it was about God's clowns. We said, well, that's who we always thought we were. So we'll be there. But yeah, it's YouTube. It's Fire Science Theater Q&A. There's a Q&A locally that was done right here on Whidbey Island about a decade ago. And then we got to show that audience the movie so you can join in with them and, and see it as well. God's Clowns. But um, we haven't even said what we're here for. New old material and lots of it. Yeah, the 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 first release and the one that's coming out uh, next next week is Dope Humor of the Seventies, the only album that is named after a cut on it that was written and recorded fifty years before. It was actually uh, done uh, on our radio shows back back then. So Dope Humor of the Seventies is is out. It's a two. Uh, LP record set, limited edition, by the way, and I have to point this out, they're, they're not like going to press a lot of these albums. I think it's a 500 edition of this album. And it, of course, opens up, but is there a poster inside? No, there's a little thing that gets you another hour and a half worth of material. Quite wonderful. Uh, this is stand-up record, stand-up with an exclamation point. Uh, and, and they've been terrific. It's, a, it's one of those labels, you know, like Rhino was back in the day. Uh, Rhino saved our lives. And this is just a couple of guys making comedy records who loved us. And, and that's the kind of world that the fire sign has inhabited since we began in a time when there were three television networks and the telephone company owned everything. And let's see, was there any internet? No, there weren't. I'm sorry, there weren't. There were your 12 local radio stations, you know. Uh, that was it. The access that we would have now, well, there you are. Don't you think we'd be doing that all the time? My gosh, we'd be podcasting. We'd be doing all kinds of things if we started now because the access to the public is so much greater. Instead of saying, oh, we did this great album, it's all recorded, mixed, and it's, it'd be out in six months. And you, and you think, ah, oh, I want it out now. I want people to hear what we have to say or sing now. So I think there's a, there's a uh, and people are taking a, taking the opportunity uh, for all these media, and also you're listening. Podcasting is basically a listening medium. My son, who's 28, goes around and he's listening all day to one podcast or another. And uh, listening is something that almost stopped. We come from the age when we grew up listening to the radio. You know, you even listened to the television in the other room, you know, because you knew what was on it anyway. Um, listening just almost left us. And in terms of a commercial uh, business, like radio, or even the moment that we had wonderful access through Columbia Records to do comedy and, and, and science fiction and storytelling on LP albums. Uh, that only lasted a moment, but now, thanks to, uh, well, Bandcamp, you can go to Bandcamp. And for those of you who don't know anything about the Fireside Theater, Bandcamp has a free download of like, I don't know, 36 cuts or something like that from all of our albums. It's free. We can't ask you to pay for it because it's, it's owned by other people, some of it. But you can get it free and it will introduce you to everything that uh, uh, quite a wide selection of uh, fire sign madness over the years that we were working together. Yeah. <laughs> 
And there it is, right. Um, well, yeah, we, th that of course is from um, an album called Everything You Know Is Wrong, which is a Columbia album. We have still, um, I'm not sure how many Sony still has in print, probably waiting for the electrician. Uh, how can you be in two places at once? Uh, Don't Crush That Dwarf. And I think Roald Bose was on this bus. I think those four albums, they probably, Sony still probably sells them. We did 10. And the other ones I think have basically dropped out of print. And plus Phil Austin's brilliant album, uh, uh, Roller Maidens from Outer Space. Uh, it's just an insane album. Mine uh, uh, at that same time was How Time Flies and Procter & Bergman did an al album called TV or Not TV. At that moment, you could, it was like writing a novel or writing a short story or a play. You could put it on a record and people could take it home and play it over and over. And that's, uh, that's why this material is listenable, it's complicated um often very complicated and <clears throat> unsequential jumps around what you might call postmodern um in in those terms and that's because we meant for you to put it on the turntable and play it over and over because that's what we were doing with the with the beatles with sergeant pepper at that point and the other albums that came out you wanted to hear it again flipped it over. So uh, it comes from that hearing era. And I think we're back to that. And that's, to me, that's very exciting to be back to where people are listening. Well, I th the, our most famous, quote, famous album is Don't Crush That Dwarf, Hand Me the Pliers. But I think if I were going, I would go right back to the very first album, Waiting for the Electrician or someone like him, because two things. Side one is a little history of the country you're living in. The first track is about Native Americans and... Um, and what happened? Because we were very close in those years to, uh, to the Hopi who were using us really as a vehicle to tell people about the Hopi prophecies. The second track on first side is an expose of the 70s, of the 60s really. That's uh, just how crazy everything was at that moment. And then the third track is the future and you can make up your own mind about how we were seeing the future from 1967 to the present. Very interesting, actually. The other side, the big side, 15 minutes or so, is uh, uh, Waiting for the Electrician, which is a, a kind of an avant-garde play in which a young man, just like you're the young man in your audience, when they travel, have to cross the border. And what happens when you cross a border? is you can't is unpredictable and so there are a series of adventures as i said earlier in when i was talking that end up finally with this this young man being given the plague and we've done this on stage um we've done it uh, it's it's audio but you can also put it on stage just as well so i'd start with waiting for the electrician the first album and uh, if if you if if you if you remember or like old quote old radio classical radio from the 50s uh, nick danger is a, uh, a really funny take on uh, those radio detective shows like Richard Diamond and uh, the, with, with the act, action-packed expense account. I can, anyway, there were a hundred of those guys at the time and we piled them all into one character called Nick Danger, Third Eye. He has a third eye right here and wears his hat down low, so covers it up all the time. Um, that was that was the record that introduced us, I think, to the largest uh, listening public. It's the it, the uh, electrician was still pretty esoteric, uh, 
by 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 69 it was just catching but by by that time uh nick danger was out there and uh, the other side of how could you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all <clears throat> is another big take on uh, on american history we used we did the part of it on stage um uh, called and we called it the American pageant and we would rewrite it every time we went out to do a show but it's a history it's an, another history lesson and uh, I think those things are very good to pass along they don't change our history today is the same as it was 50 years ago trust me sure. <clears throat> so I would to mention too that the um, so dope humor of the 70s that's coming out and actually this episode is our episode is going to air i think three days before it drops mm -hmm. um there is also a 56 page pdf of um scans of all the scripts from the original broadcasts yeah it, it's it's cool. it, it's a big package and it's taken a while uh for us to get the whole package together taylor jessen who's our archivist and has been for about the last 15 or 20 years he knows our work better than, certainly better than uh, Phil Proctor and I together know it. And uh, so what he has done, much of this material is in the Library of Congress. Uh, we, we shipped everything, a uh, hundred boxes to the Library of Congress. But of course, uh, Taylor managed to make copies of these things. So yes, there's a big take that has um, original, you know, handwritten draft scripts. Peter would write a, a commercial and come into the studio with this thing and then just leave the, 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 uh, the script page on the table. I'd pick it up and put it, in, oh, I got to put this in my archive. So uh, yeah, there's all that kind of stuff just to look at and realize um, when you see the cover of the album, it's a round table with the four of us uh, sitting around it, uh, our producer lying on the floor, our engineer lying on the other side of the floor, and a couple of very nice women who used to be wives in the group also sitting around the table, which is covered with stuff. And the reason it, it is, is because we, we would go into the studio with uh, newspapers, books, magazines, whatever we had collected during the previous week, and that we thought was funny or there was a drop in or was, would start something going or it could be something we'd written a commercial uh, you know or an idea even you know let's talk about this uh because it wasn't all comedy it was it was talking it was discussion it was the moment of time so there's about 86 hours total of those radio shows from uh, uh, and that doesn't include Radio Free Oz, that's just the Firesign Theater shows. Uh, and from that huge reservoir, why this group of, uh, of uh, selections, both the ones uh, that are on the vinyl and the ones that you can download, uh, are from, are, are there in that 80 hours, which you don't have to dig out because Taylor has made his selection for you. <laughs> Lucky us. And that's, um, if people want to find that, they can um, pick it up from firesigntheater.com. You can find all of our stuff is, uh, is accessible from firesigntheater.com. The record company is Stand Up with an exclamation point if you want to go directly to them. Excellent. We always like, you know, these are very personal connections. I have to say, you know, um, this is not corporate America that you, you're dealing with, or we are, we're two old guys, and we have a somewhat younger guy who's like helping us around. And, uh, uh, and, and we are um, close to our fans. We are very close and have always been close to our fans. The first um, famous person, famous writer that I ever met was Ray Bradbury when I was a teenager. And he was so open, polite, giving, a sharing. And I, I, I then knew him off and on all my life until he passed away. And he really taught me how to, how to be someone who had an audience, who had people who come up and say, I need something from you. I want something from you. Well, that's, you, you, that can either make you feel very uncomfortable or it can make you feel blessed. Um, 
but you have to know how to handle it. I, I'm not talking about a celebrity, a huge celebrity. I don't, would not possibly know how to handle that if I were recognized in the supermarket. Well, I am here after all, it's yeah. a small town. Uh, but but just by being known because my picture is on the cover of a dozen record albums, you know? So David, you're a busy guy. Um, in addition to um, No Pits of the 70s, do you have anything else of your own um, coming up in the near future? Or? Well, a couple of things. If you, uh, uh, if you go to Fireside Theater at the Bandcamp site, uh, you'll have access to some productions uh, that, are, that we, we, my wife, Judith Walcott, and I uh, created over the last 30 years, including uh, It's Up Now, the 50th anniversary production of The War of the Worlds, which we did in 1988 and has an all-star, very interesting all-star cast. And uh, a, it was the very first di all digital production. It was done at Skywalker Ranch by a Academy Award-winning uh, uh, technical producer. It's fabulous. It really is incredible. So that's, that's there. That, and we will be offering uh, other things from our archives, including The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, another four hours, another all-star cast production. So they'll be showing up as we move along. Firesign has got a, another large download that's related to this same period of time, uh, the psychedelic period, you might say. And uh, that is all the live stage performances that we have uh, that were recorded that we did because we went, we, we had an album out, we had to go perform. We were just like a band, we were a band. And so uh, you had to, you know, you book yourself in 50, 50 bucks. Let's see, that's $12 and 50 cents a piece. Okay, we, we had, food was cheap in those days. So uh, uh, from 68 onward, we were doing stage, live stage shows. Many of them were recorded. I don't know how many hours it comes to, um, but that will be, uh, a, another band camp download, and it's called Before They Changed the Water. Before They Changed the Water. Good title. And so that's all live shows. So what you get with, with Fireside Theater this very early period is all of our scripts in books from uh, Bear Manor Books. All of those early scripts are, are published. And instead of wondering what that word was, you could never quite catch, you can, you can see it written down clearly. Uh, uh, film uh, is is take a look at firesigntheater.com, and you'll you. I'm amazed myself at how many media we were active in, considering that we were this kind of esoteric comedy group. So uh, uh, it's all out there, and it's funny. It's I they I they put it up for me, and I said I cannot believe that we did that. And that's kind of the kind of the way it works. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, David, thank you um, very much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, we really appreciate you coming on, and we're excited to get a chance to sit down and um, really listen to dope hits from the seventies. Dope humor of the seventies. Yeah, yeah. They are hits. They well, will be hits, right? <laughs> all right. It will be a hit. It was a hit. It'll be a hit again. Thanks, guys. <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Uh,